Hi, I'm Mike Svab, and today I'm going to help you with how to load a paintbrush, one of the simple little problems in painting that you're going to want to solve so you can create paintings you love. For this little demonstration, what I want to do is help you with how to deal with just loading a paintbrush. It sounds very simple, it sounds very basic, and it is, but it's something you have to practice, you have to work at, you have to get, a, get to understand what's going on and how the paint's gonna react. Now there's two or three things that are really important uh, that you have to consider as an artist, and I'm gonna demonstrate them here, but you have to consider whether you're gonna paint flat, so I have a flat surface here, or I'm gonna paint on an easel, so up or flat, the second thing is, am I going to paint wet or dry? So am I going to paint into wet paint, either flat or up? And the third thing is, how thick do I want to paint? Do I want to do a thick application of paint or a thinner or a very thin application of paint? So those three things really determine how you're going to load the paintbrush and how you're going to go about this, okay? So you do have to know where you're going to be going. But now I'm going to put out some paint and I'm going to show you a couple different things that happen and a couple of different things to watch for. And it just makes painting a little more complicated if you don't plan for these kind of things. So the more you can plan in painting, the better off you're gonna be and you'll create better paintings, okay? So I've got three tubes of paint here. Um, I've got a quinacridone magenta. It doesn't really matter what the colors are. Quinacridone nickel azo gold and this one's a phthalo blue. So I'm gonna put out some paint and it's acrylic. These are all acrylic colors that I'm using for this. And there's some blue. And with acrylic, you never know when it's going to dry or how fast it's going to dry. So I don't put the paint out ahead of time. I put it out just before I'm going to use it. And this is a palette I would use for outdoor painting or demonstration painting or, you know, someplace where I'm going to throw the paint away after. So there's the three pigments I've got there. So nickel azo yellow, quinacridone magenta, and phthalo blue. It doesn't really matter what the pigments are. These are just to give you an idea, okay? Now, before you start, again, if I'm on a painting, I'm going to consider you know, how big a passage of paint I want to paint and make sure I have enough paint out and mix up enough paint to fill that passage and a little bit more. One of the common mistakes people make as well is they don't put out enough paint. And so we all have a natural tendency, once we've got the paint out, we use it because it's there or we're too lazy to put out more. We've got a million different reasons. We're too cheap to put out more paint. We use the paint, you know, there's all kinds of reasons we don't use the right amount of paint. But the thing to do as an artist is to think about how much paint you're gonna need for this and then put out a little bit more. And in this case, I'm gonna mix up a little bit more than I think I need, all right? Now, I don't have anything in mind, but what I wanna show you is just how to load your brush first. So I'm gonna start with this one here. This is the quinacridone gold or nickel azo gold. And what I'm doing now on here, I put the brush in the water and you can see the paint on the surface here, all right? You see how thick it is? I've added water to it, and sometimes I'll use a combination of medium, and this is just a mixture of acrylic and water, which I use all the time. Sometimes I'll add medium, sometimes just water, or sometimes a combination of the two. Now, I want, for this application, something in the middle. So I don't want it to run. So how do I know it's going to run? It doesn't have legs. I tip it up. You tip it up, it doesn't run. So that means it's kind of in the middle, a thickness where the paint's in the middle. When I apply this paint now, it will tend to stay wherever I put it on a dry surface. So this surface is dry, this surface is dry. And you notice when I go here, I get my brush full of paint. I've mixed up about half of that pile of paint and I can only get a couple of brush strokes out of that. So I make sure I've got enough. And then when I put the actual paint on, I'm gonna see how far I can go with this. This is canvas that's taped down to the surface. So let's see. 
Okay, so you can see what happens. Okay, as I go across. Now, that's really as far as I can go from here to here. So if I'm trying to cover this whole thing, right, I go back, I go back, I go back, I go back, because I want it reasonably consistent. So I've got to get a big pile of paint just to cover a little area, all right? That's with medium thick paint. Now, another thing I'll do, I'm going to use the same paint, is load the brush. Now I've got a lot of water here, right? So now it's going to run. See, it drips, all right? right? So now whether I'm flat again or upright doesn't matter. It's just when I put that on, you can see I can go a lot farther. These brushes are acrylic brushes and they hold a lot more paint and water than a bristle brush or a stiff brush, right? So you can see there that's more transparent, right? Now when you lay f when your painting's laying flat like that, what happens is you'll get a hard edge around this when it's on dry. So that's going to have a hard edge around it. This is going to dry even. This is going to have a hard edge. Now I want to demonstrate this over here. So again, I want a really liquidy mixture. And I'm going to go here and go a certain distance. And what's going to happen on the bottom of that, you can see the paint pooling on the bottom. Now if you want to do a big passage of paint, see there goes the drip. See that? That's how I know I've got enough paint. Now, you may or may not want that to happen, right? Sometimes I want that to happen. It's not necessarily a problem. It's just the way the paint behaves. And you have to learn to control the paint to a certain degree and take advantage of things that the paint does. So sometimes I'll start up there and I'll work into that. You know, sometimes I'll leave the drip. Right? Now I've got a certain amount of time Obviously, it's going to dry at the top first, dry at the bottom later. So if I want to have a nice even passage, I've got to work into it while it's wet. And this is just going to run down and even out. So I'll just get a couple more drips on there. So we got some drips happening for later. But that's very thin paint. Okay, the last part of this is really thick paint. And I'm going to do a bit of layering with this so that you get a sense of one on top, but I don't want to put out a huge passage. So I'm going to take a smaller brush here. It's a half inch brush. If I wanted to do a, a passage with a big brush like that, I would have to put out a whole big pile of paint. So this time, just a small. Okay, so again, now this time I'm not going to wet the brush. You notice the other times I wet the brush first. I don't want the water in the brush. I want the brush to hold as much paint as possible and move it as much as possible. So you can see how much I've got in the brush. Can you see that? That's a lot of paint, all right? Now, for those of you who are of the cheap extraction, this is gonna you know, cause heart palpitations sometimes, but don't worry about it, right? The best thing you can do with this paint is get it out of the tube and onto the canvas. So then I've got a real thick passage of paint. And I'll do things, you know, sometimes to make it even thicker. One of the things I'll do sometimes is I'll take that, and it's almost like icing a cake. I don't do a lot of cake icing. I've done a little bit, but you want to get it on there as thick as you possibly can. And with opaque passages or you want to cover or different things happening sometimes you just gotta you do this and when it dries you can see through it and then you've got to do another layer and another layer and you're getting it on as thick as you can straight out of the tube but you've got to apply several layers so that's one of the issues so that's a loaded brush each one of those brushes I have as much paint as I can carry this is you know kind of in the middle this is very wet and this is very dry so I get the maximum coverage, all right? Now, when I'm painting on a painting, right, I think about where I'm at and what I want to have happen. In this case here, what I've done here is I've used just water. Now, I think the camera's going to pick this up reasonably well. You can see the granulation or separation in the paint, all right? And that 
gives you this kind of sandy looking effect, right? And artists call it granulation. And that's really the way the paint works. And one of the things about painting is if you paint with a loaded brush and you put it on that way and you let it sit, it'll do that and it'll do it beautifully for you, right? If you go back in there and fiddle with it, the water will get pulled this way, that way, and the other way, and you won't get this nice granulation and separation. So that's, that's an effect, you know, you may or may not like, but you have to paint with a loaded brush to get that, okay? Um, if I use the medium to do that, I wouldn't get as much granulation. And I wouldn't get as much dripping because this is a little bit thicker, but it's just another thing that happens. Okay, so that's really how to load a paintbrush. And one of the things I want to do on top of this, I'll do in the next segment, which will be how to use a paintbrush. Okay, thank you. And I hope you got something out of that. And that's something you have to practice over and over so you can create paintings you love. I hope you found this information useful. Now, I have a handout called How to Fix Your Painting, and you can get it by clicking on the link below. Thank you for watching.